6 in civil asset forfeiture. It's a proposal that, if passed, will be a stricter record-keeping system when it comes to seizing property or belongings. Tonight, we're looking at what's at stake for law enforcement agencies and why they don't agree with everything on that bill. But first, what does civil asset forfeiture mean? It mainly has to do with people accused of or found guilty of committing a crime and the evidence related to that crime. If someone is accused of committing a crime with a gun, for example, that firearm is seized and taken into evidence. Once any criminal court proceedings are finished, the evidence involved in the case moves on to civil court. There, a judge can decide whether or not your property is returned to you. Reasons for keeping evidence could be due to its dangerous or illicit nature. North Dakota is one of two states with an F rating when it comes to the civil asset forfeiture law, and that's according to the Institute for Justice. Renee Cooper sat down with a lawmaker who's pitched a bill in the House for reform and tells us what law enforcement thinks of the proposed changes. As the law stands, if your property is seized due to suspected criminal activity, you have to go to court twice, once for the alleged crime and secondly, to fight to get your property back, regardless of your guilt or innocence. If they seize $1,000 from you and then the court's going to forfeit unless you can come to court and fight for it, are you really going to pay an attorney $2,000 to fight to get your $1,000 back? Any money forfeited goes back to the law enforcement agency that seized it in the first place. Representative Becker says this creates an incentive for officers to seize property for forfeiture. This is often called policing for profit. No one's accusing of, um, of them of that now, but law enforcement officers are no different than you or me, politicians, plastic surgeons, reporters. They're human beings and they have human nature and all of us respond to incentives. That allegation is completely false, completely false, and I can't stress that enough. Nobody's out here to hurt innocent people. You don't get into my line of work with the intention of hurting innocent people. The new House bill says if you're not convicted of a crime, you can have your property back without having to go through civil court. Sergeant Bolmy is in charge of keeping track of BPD's asset forfeitures. He has an issue with this part of the bill because they can't always get the conviction they'd hoped for. Well, sometimes you need that civil mechanism to make sure that that money doesn't go back to the drug dealers and the human traffickers and things like that. One part of House Bill 1286 that lawmakers and law enforcement can both agree on is a reporting system, something not currently being tracked. So we know what's being seized, why it's being seized, where it's being seized. You know, it never hurts to shine light on a process. We're not scared of that. I think that's probably a good thing, and I hopefully it'll alleviate some of those fears. Sergeant Bolmy's biggest concern is that if the bill does pass, then forfeited funds will no longer go back into the law enforcement agency. While Representative Becker says this will take away their incentive to wrongfully seize, Sergeant Bolmy says without this revenue from criminals, BPD will lose $100,000 to $120,000 a year that has gone towards training, equipment, and their canine program. Renee Cooper, KX News. Thursday, the bill received a due pass recommendation from the committee 11 to 3. Representative Becker expects it to pass the House, but he's unsure about the Senate. A similar bill failed in the Senate dur during the last legislative session. So why does North Dakota rank so low and why did we get an F rating? It's because state law says law enforcement can seize your property with probable cause alone. That means a police officer needs only enough information to suspect a crime is being committed in order to take any money, firearms, or other property involved. Other states like North Carolina and Nebraska require proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Massachusetts is the only other state to receive a failing grade. Also in the legislature today, a bill prohibiting housing or workforce discrimination based on sexual orientation went down in the House today. The state house.